Oh. Uh-huh.
those that have started singing for us. Now to, it's been wonderful what they've done so far, but we want to join our voices together to sing from our SS&S 221. SS&S 221. Glorious things of thee are spoken. We'll have uh, Sister Titi Idu leading us through this song. Verses 1, 2, and 3, and the others that will follow.
Fadero to pray for us. Our Father and our God, I send our thanks and praises. We thank you, precious Lord, for another opportunity like this. We are so happy that uh, this is your day, and uh, we are happy to be in it. Please accept our thanks and praises. Thank you for gathering us together joyfully, every one of us the same step that people are struggling today and into their death and accidents but thou O oh lord has protected us and brought us safely lord accept our thanks and praises father in the name of jesus not by our eloquent word not by our education not by our money or our riches that you may cause qualify to stand before you today but by your grace. Yes. Lord, accept our thanks and praises. Amen. Here we have come again to die. Oh Lord, come and feed us. Amen. To the glory and honor of your holy name. Please come and feed us. Uh, your word as it shall come. Your servant that you shall use. Lord God Almighty, as you shall open his mouth. Lord, come and fill it. Amen. A word of wisdom. Amen. A word of salvation. Amen. A word of sanctification. Amen. A word that will... In, 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 I mean, encourage and imply your spirit to fall down. Lord, please come and fill his mouth. And as it comes down, Lord, remold our life. Remake us. Help us to the glory and honor of your holy name. Empower us, O oh Lord. Revive us, O oh Lord. And we shall praise thee forevermore. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. It. Yeah. 
Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1 to 13. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1 to 13. 1. Now therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. For to do them, that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Two, ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish earth from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Three, your eyes have seen what the Lord did, because of Balpo, for all the men that followed Balpo, the Lord thy God had destroyed them from among you. For, but ye that cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you this day. Five, behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Six, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Seven, for what nation is there so great? Who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord your God is in all things that we call upon him for? 8. And what nation is there so great, that had statutes and judgment so righteous? Nine. And keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thy eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons, and thy sons' sons. Ten, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord, thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. Eleven, and ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. 12. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude only. Ye heard a voice. 13. And the last verse. 
and he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stones. Amen. Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy where we had our scripture reading. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord the go, which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. 
this was, um, I would say, an ultimatum to the children of Israel. As they were just about to enter into the promised land, Moses saw it fit to remind them what God wanted them to do. What God would have them keep in order for them to be successful in the promised land. Now you'll find we also have Joshua, uh, part of Joshua 24, 24, where he says, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. In these verses that we read to us, you'll find God spoke through Moses to the children of Israel, telling them how much they had the voice of God himself speaking to them at Mount Sinai. And when they heard the voice of God speaking to them, they were so much afraid to the extent that they pleaded Moses to say, we don't think we can leave if we continue to hear God speak to us. It's better that you go and hear the words of God and speak to us, for we are afraid. We don't know whether we will leave. It was a unique experience for them. You know, we read this as a historical account of what happened. But if you want to put yourself in their shoe and see the lightnings and the thundering, and then from heaven you hear this voice of God. I don't know how it spoke to them, but I know they heard it. And the account is there that God spoke. Not only did he speak at this particular time, we also know that when Jesus was baptized, when he come, came out of the water, the Spirit of God came down in the form of a dove. And then there was the voice of God saying, Hear ye him, this is my son. God is still speaking. Amen. Amen. Even in our day, God is still speaking. Yes. May God help us to hear Amen. what God is saying to us. Amen. We are living in the last days. We are the fourth generation. The time that Christ is coming is at hand. But what does he require of you and me? Do you know what? From the lesson... The summary of it is what we are talking about. Obedience, the way to blessings. Everyone, everybody wants to be blessed. Uh, you, you can talk to Christians, non-Christians, anyone in the world, they want to be blessed. They want things to be well about them. But how to go about it is where the challenge is. But we want to thank God that God himself has given us the pathway to blessings. Amen. He has shown to us that if, if we want God to bless us in this life and the life to come, it's just by obedience to his word obedience to his law. 
when we do that, God will do his part. You know, um, I said, let me go to the dictionary. And I went on uh, Google and I just said, obey. What does it mean to obey? It simply means to submit to the authority of someone, in brackets, or comply with a law. As a statement, it can be said, I always obey my father. It's to do what someone says, to take orders, carry orders, follow orders, take heed, to submit, to be ruled by. You know, at times we, we don't want to be influenced by others, but God has influence over us. To bow to, to give way, to yield, to surrender. That, that, that's what obedience simply means. Now, contrary to that, the opposite of obedience or synonyms to that, oh, sorry, antonyms to that is disobey, defy, contravene. I pray that God will help us Amen. through this uh, word that he has before us that I will learn more to be obedient to him. Amen. That you also learn more to be obedient to him. You know, we want to be able to simply carry out what the word of God teaches us to do. That, that is Christianity. You know, I, I always marvel at the fact that when they were termed Christians, it was more like a derogatory term. They are like Christ. You know, they, they behaved like Christ. But now we, we want to embrace this term and profess that we are Christians by the way we live. It's simply by how I live when I have come to Jesus and submitted to his terms. Let me tell you, without obedience to the word of God, none of us will be saved. None of us will be saved. Um, I happen to be opportune to be uh, carrying out interviews of um, our candidates for baptism at the camp meeting. And in the process, I learned something. Because we would ask, tell us, how did it happen? <coughs> and then, of all, most of the candidates that we interviewed, do you know what struck me was? They decided to be saved. They said, I, I, I decided, I made a decision that I now want to be saved. Do you know what? As long as one has not yet decided to be saved, salvation, it can be preached from the top of the mountain, from the valley, from anywhere. You can go to a gathering where there are millions of people listening to the word of God being preached, it won't make a difference. But when you make a decision, like what Nicodemus did, he heard about Jesus. Then he decided, I want to find out from him myself. And when Jesus told him, you must be born again. There were two of them. And glory be to God, Amen. he heard that message, Amen. he believed, he acted upon it, he was obedient to it, and he was saved. 
He forgot about his position as a, one of the great Pharisees. He just knew that this man is something greater than what we know as Pharisees. May God help us to obey his word. Amen. And when we obey the word of God, you know, it is good for us. Yeah. And when we don't obey the word of God, it is not good for us. That's what Moses told the children of Israel. I had my own experience um, yesterday. We recently bought um, a printer and the technology is so much advanced these days. You can connect your printer hardwired or you can connect it um, using Wi-Fi. Now, I've got here the error report that I got when I failed to connect it. It said, check network connection. That was the first thing. And the result was error code and then with a number. See that, see the network status and check if the network name, which is SSID, is the SSID you want to connect to. If the SSID is correct, make sure to enter the correct password and try again. If the problem persists, see your documentation for help and networking tips. Right. I want to tell you my experience. It took me quite some time to get around this error. I know some people who are IT um, experts might wonder, Brother Mark, what was the problem? But my problem was I was skipping part of the instructions that are written in the manual. That's, that's where the problem was. And now the error report is telling me that go back to the manual. I could have tried everything and tried to, to send the document to print, send a hundred to print, send 150 to print. It doesn't make any difference. I have to go back to the manual. So I had to choose to say, okay, let me go back to this manual. Let me start from step one and see how it works. Downloaded the, the, the software again. After downloading this software, go to step one. Go to step two. Go to step three. Until I discovered that, okay, this is what I was missing. Even my, net, my, my internet provider was not connected to my printer. So there's no... The printer and my remote provider for um, internet when everything was set up and connected and then I send the document. Guess what? It printed. What I learned from that is there are at times when we need to go back to the basics and do the basic things that probably we know we have to do. Because I tell you, I desire to see a printout of my sermon. But if I didn't go through the right way to uh, make sure the printer would work, I wouldn't have this printout of my sermon. The outcome, I knew it. I want a printed paper. But I had to follow the instructions. Where does that leave us? You know, with all that we do as Christians, if we check our lives and we don't have the fruits of Christianity, then there is a problem. 
And the problem is not the printer. God made us perfectly well. The problem is, are we connected to God? That's what the problem is. Do we want God to bless us? Yes, everybody wants God's blessings. But I, am I connected to this God? You know, you can cry out, you can pray as much as you think you can do with all your strength and everything that is within your power. But if the connection is not there, it will be like me sending 100 documents or 100 times my sermon to the printer and it would not print because I've sent it 100 times if it's not connected. Now, where, where am I getting to? God desired the children of Israel through the word that we have read that they must obey him. They must subscribe to the law of God. Else it will be curse after curse after curse. For every blessing there was an equivalent curse. So they had a choice to make. They had to decide to say, we want to follow God and follow him all the way. According to his terms. May God help us. You know, when we come to God, we don't come to God with our terms. We come to God with none of our terms but to subscribe to his terms. That is absolute obedience. And when we do that, for whose benefit is it? God is supreme. He is eternal. He can do without us. But He wants us to enjoy ourselves. And obey the commandments of Jesus Christ will be saved from their life of sin. And when we follow that path, when we are connected to God, then the, the, it's like a stream of water that flows, you know, to its desired point. You know, when the stream of water is flowing to its desired point, it waters everything along its path. Oh yes, and the beet plants or trees, they will yield their fruit. And that's what God wants to do with you and me. He wants us to have fruits for him. Fruits of Christianity. The fruits of peace, of love. Of living a life that's consecrated to him and we can only do that when we are connected to him that is the pathway that's what leads us to blessings I've heard people talk of uh, well God blesses God loves yes God loves us but he doesn't like sin in us and when we come to him his terms are, we must be washed white and clean. When we are pure, God will bless us. Now, it's important that we understand this thing. It is one thing to hear what God says. It is another thing to do what he says. It was Jesus who said, Happy are ye if you know these things and do them. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, therefore, how can all Israel, we can put our names there unto the statutes and judgments which I teach you for to do them that ye may live. I like those words. 
the, the commandments, the judgments, the statutes that I teach you. You know, the word of God comes and it does not go back to God void, but it performs that which he sends it to do only if we allow him. You know, when we yield ourselves, when we open our hearts to him, we, we, we say, God, let your word work in me. Let it do that which you want it to perform in me. And when we do that and do them, we will live. Amen. 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 We will live. Anyone that is not yet born again, they are spiritually dead. But when we pray and God saves our souls, we are quickened to life. We become alive to God. We are sensitive to the word of God. Sensitive to the commandments of God. And God helping us, we will be able to execute, we'll be able to do what he teaches us. And thus, you know, God delights in us doing what he commands us to do. Uh, I'll finish that verse. For to do them that ye may live and go in and possess the land, the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Well, they were promised a physical land. They were supposed to enter into Canaan. And they were told when they enter in there, their house is built. Amen? Amen. There, there, there are fruit trees already planted. There are wells dug. Everything was ready for them to go in and possess. Does that ring a bell to us? To us, dear, that we have a land that we are going to. A land that our, only our spiritual eyes can see. A land that is that has streets of gold. A land that has a river of clear crystal water with fruit trees about it. You know, a, a land where we will never cry again. A land where we will never sigh. A land where Christ himself is the light to us. We, we are going to that land, but we need to obey his word. And as much as we want the blessings of God. You know, people want good houses. They want good jobs. They want everything good. But I tell you, the beginning is salvation. And when we, are saved, when we are saved from our life of sin, we need to live a holy, consecrated life. What that means is day in and out, our mind, our thinking, our desire is to please God. With the way we conduct ourselves, either in the streets, in our workplaces, at home, we want to please God. You know, when we determine to do that and say, God... Help me to do your word. God will bless us. Amen. He will bless us. Yeah. It was uh, Peter who asked Jesus and said, we have left house. We have left our, 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 our wives. We have left everything. What are we going to get? And Jesus promised them that you will get an equivalent of everything that you left and a hundred times which means multiplied blessings. There are blessings when we serve God. Oh yes, there are blessings. Because this God heals us from our sicknesses. This God provides for our needs. This God fights for our battles. This God is our everything. And we enjoy that. And there are blessings year after. The promise of heaven, eternal life with God. You know, in the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19 and 20, 
Jesus said to his disciples, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. You know, Jesus told his disciples to go and teach. But not only teach, there was an expectation that those who are taught will obey. May, may God help us to understand these things. You know, many times Jesus will tell his disciples, do you understand these things? He asked those questions. Go to the Gospels according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and see how many times you say, do you understand these things? Because if we do not do what God teaches us to do, all our hearing will not amount to anything. You know, I just want to end by reading from 1 Samuel 15. 1 Samuel 15. Verse 22. And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Take note of that. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. I want us to take note of the words there. You know, some people think they can do everything for God and by works they will enter into heaven. It's not by works, but by faith in God and obedient faith that when God looks at us with that kind of obedient faith, we will be born again. Amen. For they just live by faith. Now, Samuel thought he had executed what the people had asked him to do. Yet God had a commandment that it was only the prophet who was supposed to offer sacrifices to God. Sorry, Saul did that. Now Saul did not do what God wanted him to do. Was just to wait. And then he thought, let me offer the sacrifice because Samuel had case of disobedience. When someone thinks I'm doing something for God, at times we need to be careful. In our doing things for God, we can be making errors by not doing things that we are asked to do. Now, when, when so, so we try to defend himself. But then the prophet of God told him that his action of disobedience was similar to rebellion. It was similar to stubbornness. It was similar to worshipping an idol. May, may God help us. Now, when, when he said in verse 24, he acknowledged that I have sinned, I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and my words because I feared the people. Now, we need to be careful that we obey God, not people. It's God that will take us to heaven. If people influence us contrary to the word of God, we don't obey them. 
Because our obedience is to God. Now, he knew that he had transgressed because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, whose voice are you obeying? Is it the voice of God or the voice of the people? Because at times people end up doing things because everybody else is doing it. They walk the path because everybody else is walking it. But is God, is that what God wants you to do? We have to think and say, God help us to do what you would have us do for you according to your word. Then God will bless us when we do that. I pray that today you will make a decision to say, God, I want to follow this path of obedience. Now when you do that, God will bless you, not only in this life, but in the life to come. For eternity awaits all of us. Shall we come to the altars and pray as we sing closing song 601 from our CGS. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the power of your word. We thank you, Father, because we know you loved us and because you have blessings in stock for us. We have come again this morning because you've reminded us that the way through to salvation is obedience. 
Lord, even as we kneel to pray, help us, O oh God, to obey you. Amen. Jesus, please come and save us this morning. Amen. Sanctify this morning. Amen. Baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Teach us, O oh God, to love you. Amen. Give us your spirit to obey you. At these altars of prayer, O oh God, so that at the end of today, we might be able to look back and see, yes, indeed, have you done this? Yes. Glory be to your name. Amen. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.